Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today we are gonna be giving some makeup products a second chance. I decided to compile some products that I have not loved <laughs> and products that just really haven't worked for me and I wanted to give them a second chance here on camera because there's been plenty of moments in my makeup career where I have changed my mind pretty drastically on a product. There's some products that I started off loving, I end up not liking so much and then there's products that I started off some may say hating. And then, you know, I did change my mind and start to like them. There are a lot of different reasons why a makeup product may or may not work out. Sometimes it's an application issue. Sometimes it's just like a bad skin day. And sometimes it's just in the stars <laughs> and it's just not gonna work no matter what you do. So when I decide that I don't like a product, I won't often go back to it and try and make it work as much as I possibly can. And I think that every product deserves a second chance. <laughs> so without further ado, let's just get started. So for the base, I'm going to be using my NARS Soft Matte Complete Foundation. Now I did also want to include a primer that I've in the past haven't really enjoyed in today's video, but I figured that if I'm trying to make a foundation that I don't like work, the worst thing I can do is um, put a primer that I also don't like in the mix because there's just no way that that is going to end up going in a positive direction. So instead, the focus is going to be just on the foundation and making this guy work or trying to make it work at least. So my main issue that I had with this product was that I found that it just made my skin look really, really, really dry. It looked super heavy, super cakey. It attached to all of my dry patches. It just didn't mesh well with my skin at all. My foundation looks so patchy, you guys. I don't even know what to say. You see how you can fully just see the foundation sitting on my skin. It looks super, super dry, it doesn't look smooth. And so the primer that I like to use when I have those types of issues is the Hourglass Number no. 28 Primer Serum. This is a very, very hydrating primer that really, I find, transforms more matte and drying foundations into something a little bit more suited for my skin. And so I just feel like if anything is going to make this product work, it's gonna be this. So I'm gonna put one pump and just massage this all over my face. This is like a really thick, oily serum texture. It feels very luxurious on the skin, I will say that. We are prepped, so for the application, I am actually going to use my fingers because that is how NARS suggests using this product. When I first tried this, I believe I used a sponge and a brush, actually, one on both sides of my face, and it just didn't work. I'm honestly surprised that they do recommend using this with your fingers because it is like a pretty full coverage foundation and I typically wouldn't go in with my fingers with more full coverage foundations. I would do that more so with like a tinted moisturizer or something really light coverage. But at the same time, this is a very, very liquidy texture. So I kind of get it. Anyways, I'm just gonna take a really small amount and just start off by dabbing it around my face. From what I do remember, this is a very thick <laughs> and very full coverage product. Holy crap. Let's see. Well, I can definitely say right away, this is spreading so much better with my fingers. I found that when I was applying this with a beauty blender and a brush, it just was really difficult to spread around my face. It literally feels like I'm spreading like a thick moisturizer on. It's so weird how this is such a thick product, but with such a thin consistency, it's like an oxymoron. This is actually looking kind of good. I thought that this would just look so dry and so cakey as I did the first time that I applied it, but that actually looks so much better. I stand corrected. Okay. <laughs> Listen, it still looks a little bit heavy on my super, super dry areas, like around my nose. I find that it's kind of gathering a little bit, but on the majority of my face, like in this whole area over here, I do find that it looks really nice and smooth and almost flawless looking. But it definitely looks like I'm wearing foundation, you know? Like this is a foundation foundation. This is not a no makeup makeup look. I think with some products, you just gotta know what, what you're in for and you gotta set your expectations accordingly because you can't expect a tinted moisturizer look with a heavy full coverage foundation because most of the time you're just not gonna get it. And before I forget, I am actually going to heavily moisturize my lips in preparation for the lip product that I'm gonna put on at the end of this look because I plan on putting on a matte liquid lipstick, which is something that I typically don't like to put on my lips because it's just super dry and it's just not my preferred formula. I don't love them, so I want to 
make sure that my lips are as hydrated as possible. And that's my way of really trying to get the best the best look out of a really, really drying matte liquid lipstick. Okay, I think before I go into the concealer, I'm gonna do my eyes first because I have a feeling I'm gonna get a lot of follow-up for this. So I'm first gonna prime my lids with a primer that I was just never really a huge fan of, as with every product that I'm using in this video. So this is the Fenty Beauty Eye Primer. There really wasn't a specific reason why I didn't like this primer. I just didn't really feel like it did anything crazy special. I'm not the biggest fan of clear primers, which is what this is, because I do prefer when my eyes are more of a blank canvas when I go in to do my eyeshadow. Um, so I do prefer concealers as an eye primer or tinted eye primers. And so this one just wasn't really my cup of tea for that reason. And also I just didn't really feel like it really made the biggest difference in the longevity of my eyeshadow. I don't know, I just wasn't a big fan, but I do know that so many people love this primer, so I don't know if I'm just the odd man out on this one, but I figured I would try it again today. For the eyeshadow, I'm gonna go into the Huda Beauty Nude Palette. So the problem that I have with this palette doesn't really have much to do with the formula because I find the formula to be just fine. What I don't like about this palette and the reason why I kind of stopped reaching for it was because I felt like this palette was very much one tone and that's really the best way to describe it. This is a pretty big palette that has a lot of eyeshadows in it. And so there's a lot of room for some variety, but I feel like most of the mattes that are in here are very muted and very pale. And so when you apply that to the eye, they kind of just give all the same look and there's very, very little variance between them. And so I kind of just found that this palette, although it's so large, really lacks versatility. Because all of these shades are so light, this is definitely more suited for a fairer, lighter skin tone. And I just don't think this would work super well for more of a medium or deeper skin tone, which uh, yeah, I just don't like. So those are my thoughts on the palette. I mean, I have made some pretty looks with this, but the reason why I haven't gone back for more and why I kind of just started to dislike it were for those reasons that I just listed. So I'm going to start off with the shade Bare, which is just the cream. And I'm going to dust this from my brow bone to my crease. My eyelids, by the way, feel so sticky from that primer. It's so weird. Like every time I blink, my eyelid skin just gets stuck <laughs> together. It's the most horrible feeling. <laughs> okay, now I'm gonna go into the shade Secret, which is this like muted, I don't know, brownish rose color. And on the same brush, this is my Smith 232. I'm gonna put this up in my crease area. Just start buffing it out. What I also really dislike about this palette is the fact that there is a concealer cream right over here. So every time you dip into the shade Secret or really any other shade in the palette, if you get a little bit messy, this cream is going to get completely contaminated. And the fact that it just gets so messy from all the eyeshadow dust that gets into it just renders it completely unusable. Now I'm gonna go into a more precise blending brush and I'm gonna go into Raw, which is one step above basically Secret, just a little bit darker. And I'm just gonna pop that into the crease. So you see how even that color, yes, it is a little bit darker, but it's barely, barely darker than Secret. And that's what I don't like about this palette. Like if this was bumped up two more notches instead of just half a notch, I would have liked it a little bit more. Okay, I'm gonna go into the shade Fantasy, which is this crushed metallic shade right over here. And I'm gonna apply that with my finger. These are probably my favorite shades in the Huda palettes, just because they're so intense and sparkly. And this is really, really pretty. I would have to admit. So I'm just gonna put this on the rest of my lid that doesn't have any color on it. Okay, then I'm gonna go into the shade Daydream, which is the lighter pink metallic, and I'm gonna put that in the center of my lid. Just to add a little bit of dimension. Okay, I'm gonna take a small detail brush and I'm gonna go into the shade Spanked, which is the raspberry in the corner over here, and I'm going to just press this up against my lash line to add some depth to this look. So like on the outer corner of my eye on the lower half of the lid. I really wish that was a little bit more intense. So I'm gonna go into the shade Love Bite, which is the dark matte and layer that. 
So now I'm gonna go into the eyeliner, which is another Huda Beauty product, which I did not do on purpose, just kind of ended up that way because this is one of my least favorite liquid eyeliners. It is called the Life Liner um, in Very Vanta, which is extreme black. So this eyeliner is definitely very, very black, and I do really like that about this. I think the reason why it is kind of difficult to work with is because this is such an extremely long wearing formula. Like I'm talking when you go in with a makeup remover at the end of the day to remove your makeup, your wing will still be intact even after rubbing your eye. Like this takes manpower to take off, which, which could be good for some people, but for me, it just really irritated my eyes taking it off at the end of the day. And again, it just made it a little bit difficult to work with because it's this really weird long wearing formula. Okay, I actually did not mess that up, which is truly a miracle. If you wanna fix your eyeliner, this product, makes it very difficult to do it because it is so long wearing and it literally feels like it adheres to your skin. Trying to fix it, especially after it's kind of like set, it's not easy. Okay, so I'm gonna go in with a little bit of makeup remover on a cotton bud, and I'm gonna see if I can fix that line a little bit because it's not really as sharp as I would like it. See, it does not move. Again, some people may really like that because this will last through anything, but oh my God, this is not a user friendly eyeliner. Like I can't get that off. <laughs> so trying to fix this and make it more sharp. Look at that. It's not going anywhere. It's the craziest thing. So you wanna be sure that if you're using this, that you are doing one stroke, one kill. Otherwise, don't even go near this thing. I would like the record to show that this eyeliner is still on my head <laughs> and it's been 24 hours and two showers later. This thing is bulletproof, it's crazy. Do you have any idea how many times I've sanitized my hands today? Even the alcohol from hand sanitizer can't get this off and I just washed my hands again. This, this, is, this is my skin now. This is forever on me. It is a tattoo. Now I'm gonna apply some concealer. This is the Laura Mercier Seeker Camouflage in SC2. This is like a cult favorite product, especially among makeup artists, and I was never able to get into this. And I swore this off years ago because I just found this to be a really, really stiff, difficult to work with and drying concealer. But this is such a cult favorite product. I am almost certainly using it wrong. So <laughs> we're gonna try it again today. So this concealer is really meant to use on the face. A lot of makeup artists don't suggest using this underneath the eyes because it is too heavy. So I'm not going to set myself up for a failure here and I'm not gonna put it underneath my eyes. So a lot of people suggest to first warm up the concealer with your finger before going in to apply it. So I'm really gonna get in there <laughs> and just massage that concealer. And whisper sweet nothings into its ear and get it to work for me. Work for me. After doing that, I could definitely feel that the concealer has gone a little bit more emollient, um, whereas before it was very, very stiff and almost impossible to pick up. So that definitely did help already. I'm now gonna go in with a little concealer brush. This is my Zoeva 227. I'm gonna pick up some of the product. I think also the key is to use a very small amount of this and not cake it on. And I think using like a fluffy brush is really ideal because you're not gonna like pack on a ton of concealer. And I'm kind of just gonna airbrush this on a couple areas of my face. This is already working a lot better than I ever remember. Let me know in the comments if you guys use this product and if you love it, or if you also have had some issues with it. This is actually the best this concealer has ever looked <laughs> on me with this technique, I feel like it's not looking heavy at all. It's kind of just applying that coverage where I want it. Okay, what I am going to do, because there is like a peachy corrector in here, I'm gonna warm that up as well. And I'm gonna put a little bit of this just on the inner corners of my eye, just to correct that darkness. And that's actually not looking heavy. All right, guys, I actually really like that. I feel like that applied really, really nicely. I could actually see myself using this if I wanted more of like a full glam moment where I just have a couple areas that I wanna add more coverage to. This is applying really, really nicely and it's really meshing nicely with the foundation as well. I think the key for this is warming up the product and using a small amount on a fluffy brush instead of packing it on with a finger. I think that made a huge, 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 huge difference. All right. 
That's good news. So for my concealer underneath my eyes, I actually unfortunately did a concealer declutter not too long ago. And so I got rid of a lot of the concealers that I don't like. And so there was one concealer though that I did still keep. This is a concealer that I've had a bit of an up and down roller coaster of emotions uh, relationship with because there's been times that I've loved this and times that I've really, really hated this and I'm still a little bit undecided. So I figured I would just put it on today and we can see how it looks with today's look. And that is the Tarte Creases Concealer. Now I really, really disliked this product when it was in the little squeezy tube packaging, but then they repackaged it into this doe foot applicator packaging. And I found that it actually kind of made the product a lot better just think that the way that it applies to the skin is a lot smoother and you're able to have a little bit more control with the doe foot applicator instead of just squeezing out an unknown amount of product and just trying to make that work so i do feel like this this change in packaging did help the product a lot my problem with this product is that it is a little bit finicky if you apply just a little bit too much you're going to get a really 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 heavy look so that was really my main issue with it and i just don't like finicky products because i have so many other products in my collection that work beautifully that aren't finicky that i don't have to kind of you know work around to to make look good on my skin but i do remember that if you do use this correctly it can look really gorgeous. So we're gonna try it today. I haven't used this in a really long time and I kind of forget what it looks like. Um, and we'll just see what happens. So I am going to not over apply this because that really is the key for this product from what I remember. So I'm just gonna put a little bit right over here, kind of like in my crevice of my eye and then going up and that is all. I'm gonna use this concealer brush and just pat it out. I actually find that that made my under eyes look really, really smooth and kind of flawless. It's such a thick, almost putty-like consistency. You do not need a lot to get a good result. By the way, even though this concealer is called a creases concealer, I still do like to set it with powder because it's such a thick putty-like consistency. It's very, very sticky. And I just don't like the feeling of sticky concealer underneath my eyes. So I'm gonna just set it with a light layer of powder just to get rid of that tackiness. So I'm now just gonna finish off the eyes. I'm just gonna put some shadow on my lower lash lines and I'm going to use the shade Teddy. So I'm trying to use as many shades in here as possible. And just smoke that on the lower lash line. And then I'm gonna go in with Spanked again, which is the darker raspberry shade and just press that up against my lashes. Just add some depth there. So now it's time to finish off the eyes. I'm gonna put on some mascara and the mascara that I wanted to use today is the Urban Decay Lash Freak. I <laughs> despise this mascara when I first used this. It's just so weird. Look at the shape of this thing. It is so weird looking. It has this kind of like swoopy side to it that has some bristles on it. Then there's a little ball of bristles on the tip and then there's like a flat side that you're supposed to use to like lift up your lashes. There's just a lot going on on this little mascara wand. And sometimes like simple is, is better. I, I always appreciate some innovation, but this just really did not work for me. This made my lashes look so clumpy because this is just such a strange shape. I just was not able to really make it work. I mean, it seems like everything is going in a really good direction so far. So who knows, maybe this will look good. Oh my God. Did you see that <laughs> just folds my lashes up? Holy crap, okay. See, this is already becoming a disaster. You see how clumpy that's making my lashes? It's not separating them, it's not adding volume, it's literally just clumping my lashes together and creating a really horrible lash look. Okay, I feel like the more I go over it, the worse it's getting. I, I, I now look like I have four lashes that are just clumped together. That is not cute. I hate that, I hate that, I hate that, I hate that. I still hate this. I don't like this mascara at all. <laughs> no, I am going to bronze using a Charlotte Tilbury bronzer. I love the airbrush powders from Charlotte Tilbury. I just used the setting powder underneath my eyes. What I really like so much about the airbrush powders is that they're very smooth and they really just like airbrush the skin and they're very fine in texture as well so they don't look heavy and i actually feel like 
that kind of works against this bronzer because when you apply this, it's like you're kind of applying nothing. Even though this applies a really nice light layer of bronzer to the skin, I find it to be just too sheer and too light. What I do like about this is how large and charged the compact is. I just wanna show you how much I'm digging into this product, okay? Where's the bronzer? <laughs> it's not doing anything. And this is totally a dark enough color for me, you know? Like it is applying a really light shadow of color, but the problem is that took so much product to actually build up to that intensity, which is still a pretty low intensity. And again, normally I'm really into more natural looking products. And, you know, sometimes I do actually take this out of my collection when I want a really, really light, light layer of bronzer on my face. But I just don't really like products that make me work harder than I need to work. And I feel like with this, even though it looks so nice and natural and like smooth on the skin, it just takes so much building up to get color. And when I'm using bronzer, I want to look bronzed. That is my issue with this product and I've been putting layer after layer, like every time I put my brush down, by the way, I'm dipping back into this product and I'm still not really at the level that I wanna be at. A positive part of this product, once it's actually on, it really just looks so smooth on the skin. It kind of does the same thing that the setting powder does and just making your, your skin look really, really flawless, but it does that uh, as a bronzer and I do really like that part of it. So for blush, there's really not a ton of blush formulas that I'm you know, not the biggest fan of, um, but the one that came to mind was the Maybelline Cheek Heat Gel Cream Blushes. It's kind of the same principle as the Charlotte Tilbury bronzer. I like a natural looking product, but if I'm going out of my way to apply a makeup product to my face, I want it to do something. And that something shouldn't be nothing. I'll just show you how it applies and you'll get the point. So I'm gonna use the shade um, number 25. So you can see, ooh, wow, nice color. Start to blend it in. Oh my God, where did it go? Where'd it go? The blush, it's gone. <sighs> you see how it literally just makes the slightest, slightest hint of color on the cheeks, which again, some people may really, really love. But for me, it's just not what I'm looking for. So not a fan. So I'm just gonna... Dot it on the cheeks. And blend it. Mm. Yeah, and not only that, it just doesn't really blend how I want it to blend. It almost like stains the cheeks a little bit and picks up the foundation and looks blotchy. So still don't like this at all. My eyelashes feel so heavy from the mountains of mascara clumps that are on them. For a highlighter, there's so many highlighters that I could have included in this category because I'm very picky when it comes to highlighters and anything that is too metallic or too intense or too reflective, I just don't personally like at all because I just don't find it to be very flattering. But I decided to go with a loose highlighter from When A Wild. There's nothing worse than loose highlighting powders in my personal opinion. I just find that loose highlighting powders are so unnecessarily messy. For what? Why do we have to do loose? <laughs> when you have a press version, that could probably give you the exact same effect that's so much less of a huge mess. One sneeze, one blow of the wind, this highlighter, everywhere. I'm not even going to attempt to show you what this looks like because I do not want to make the mistake of this going all over my carpet. But do you see that? It's so messy. I'm going to just take some of the product from the cap, like the smallest amount. Oh God. Oh boy. Oh, I hate that. <laughs> it is so reflective. I know there's so many people who love these reflective highlighters, but I just can't get into it. So I'm just going to try to make it work by really buffing it into the skin so that it doesn't just look like it's a stripe sitting on top of it. This color is also more of like a blush highlighter. So it's adding some rosiness to my cheeks, which I actually don't hate, but yeah, it's just too intense, too reflective and uh, yeah, just a little bit unflattering. It really emphasizes that texture, you know? 
Okay, so now let's talk about the lip. Now I hate matte liquid lipsticks so much, I don't even have really any in my collection, at least the ones that I'm thinking of, because there are some matte liquid lipsticks that are more on the hydrating side, that you know don't feel like they're sucking the complete life out of your lips. But I'm thinking of the OG liquid lipsticks, like the Anastasia, I can't stop looking at my blotchy highlighter. The Anastasia liquid lipsticks. Those along with a lot of others were just so drying and I just don't like the way that it feels on the lips. But I don't have um, really any liquid lipsticks in my collection. But what I do have are these new ones from MAC and I'm actually really excited to try these. I have not tried them yet, so I'm gonna give you guys my first impression, I figured I might as well. I didn't have the best experience with the um, original liquid lipsticks that MAC released years ago. I think I did a whole dedicated review to them, um, again, a really, really long time ago, and I just really didn't like them. So I'm interested to see if these are going to be in the same vein as those old liquid lipsticks. So this isn't a product that I hate, but it is a type of product or a type of formula that I'm just not a fan of, but we're gonna try and make it work and see if these are actually good. My expectations are actually pretty high for these because I do really love the Powder Kiss Lipstick Bullet. Those are actually some of my favorite matte lipsticks. They're so, so, so comfortable, but they are completely matte. So if these are similar, then we should be good. Okay, let's try the shade Date Maker, which looks like it's like a brownie nude. I really like this applicator because it, it makes it really easy to line the lips. Oh, I think I like these a lot. Oh my God, this color is gorgeous. Okay, I'm just gonna give it a second to just kind of set. I don't even know if this like completely dries down, but this feels light years away from the original MAC liquid lipsticks that I tried years ago. This does not at all feel drying. This actually feels very similar to the Powder Kiss lipsticks, which is what I was hoping. It's very lightweight and it's also not drying down, which is fantastic. So it doesn't feel like it's super drying or like it's sucking the life out of my lips. It's just feels good. Oh my God. Okay, that worked. Yay. <laughs> I actually feel like this was way more successful than I had ever expected. I really expected coming out of this video with just a horrible makeup look. I actually kind of can't believe how much better this foundation looks when applied with the fingers. It really turned this product around for me completely. I won't say that this is going to be like a new go-to foundation for me, but I really do like the way it looks. Like I feel like my skin looks really, really, really flawless. But again, it still does look on the heavier side because it's such a full coverage foundation, but that is more so to be expected. I'm especially excited about this lip product. I'm really excited to try the other shades that I have here. Um, let me know if you guys would like to see me do like a swatch video of these, maybe on my Instagram stories. I think that would be really fun. Let me know in the comments if you wanna follow me on Instagram, by the way, it's Jamie Page Beauty. The product that I had the biggest turnaround for was definitely the foundation. I would also say the concealer, the Laura Mercier concealer, because I never thought that I would ever be able to make this work for my skin, but I actually think it worked beautifully. The products where my opinions stay the same, definitely the blush and the highlighter. The Huda Beauty Nude Palette also. I just feel like, again, even though everything works as it should, I just don't feel like the colors are really going to give you the versatility that you need to create a ton of different eye looks for a palette that's this big and that's why it was so disappointing for me. Oh, and the eyeliner, my opinion, has also definitely stayed the same. It's just such a finicky product. Even though I was able to make it work in the end, getting it to a point where it looks good, especially if you mess up, it's just not worth it. I would love to hear all of your thoughts on all the products that I use today. Do you feel the same as I do about these products? Did you also have issues with them? And will you be giving them a second shot after seeing this video? All right, guys, that is it. I will see you in the next one.